We are at the Gravel World Championships and on the hunt for some hot new tech. You can see we're at the Expo Zone. I've also been talking to some of the pros to get the lowdown on their own gravel setups as well. Let's go. All the talk amongst the riders here at the World Championships is tires and tire pressure, which is why I'm starting with this very cool bit of tech. This is from a company called Grava, and it is an adaptable tire pressure system. So you might remember this from uh, Yumbo Visma as they were at the time, using it at Paru Bay. Basically, in the hub there is a mechanical pump that's powered by your wheels turning and it connects wirelessly to your head unit where you can have pre-selected tire pressures on there. And it's super clever, right? So at the press of a button, you can drop your tire pressure. That costs you zero watts to a desired gravel setting. And then you can press the button again and you can reinflate it. Now they say it costs about four watts of your power and it will inflate by about 14 PSI or one bar per kilometer of riding. And then obviously once you're at the desired pressure, it costs you zero watts again. And when you think about how much tire pressure affects your rolling resistance, as well as your vibration absorption, all those other things, it sounds like there's quite a lot of gains to be had here. In terms of weight, it would add 400 grams to the system, which is small enough that Visma Lisa bike riders, Mariana Voss and Tash Benu, are using it here at the Gravel World Champs, and there's a lot of other people very interested in it. Now, it's available to buy right now. The cost includes the wheels as well, so these are on reserve wheels. It's 3,900 euros. So the system adds about 1,400 euros to the cost of the wheels. It's cool, I think this is a bit of tech to watch, you know? Next up, we have this stunning Orbea Terra. It's the bike of German athlete Paul Voss. Now, look, no tread, none at all. These are road tires, so fitted to these new massive Zip 303 Explore wheels are a pair of Schwalbe Pro 1 tires in 40 mil. And there is, there is basically no tread on here whatsoever. Paul said, it's a gamble, but it paid off for him at the European Champs last year, which was running off in the same place on a very similar course. So he'll be keeping his fingers crossed. Keeping his fingers crossed, it's gonna be dry as well. Other road touch, we've got some time pedals here, run for lower stack height, and also a bit more positivity, a bit more stability of the platform compared to mountain bike pedals. Then the other thing, I was asking Paul what's in the down tube storage here. So he's got uh, a tube and a multi-tool. He says often for UCI races, he doesn't have anything in there. Um, Dyna plugs for uh, tubeless tire fix are in a jersey pocket, and then there's two CO2 cartridges stuck on either side of that rear-facing bottle case there. We've come out to Canyon's very cool service course somewhere in rural Belgium, and I've got my hands on Tiffany Cromwell's Canyon Grail CFR. Now, Tiffany actually won the European Champs here last year, making her, I think, the first Australian ever to win a European Champs, but she's got prior form here and knows how to set a bike up. Interestingly, she's going for full slicks as well. By the time you watch this video, we'll know what her result is, but right now as I'm filming this, I don't know. She was toying with the idea of going for the RS treaded tire, but I think it's gonna go for the full slicks. Now she too is also running road pedals. Apparently she always runs them unless there's a risk of walking, like at Unbound the other year. There's a 3D printed chain catcher here, which, uh, which is a nice touch. And uh, lastly, I asked about spares storage. So uh, not much going on in the down tube storage here. Dynaplugs, CO2 canisters will be in a jersey pocket. I'm glad I tracked this one down. This is the brand new bike from Ridley. It's the Asta RS. And they've said it is an out and out gravel race bike. I really went big into aerodynamic gravel with their previous model, the Canzo Fast. This one though has been updated to basically make it better for where gravel racing has gone and is going. So critically, tire clearance, it's gone up to a massive 52 millimeters. Like these ones are already 47 mil wide and they're swimming in space, it's pretty impressive. Aerodynamics still prioritized here, particularly around the fork crown, they've said they've optimized that and that aerodynamic cockpit too. But being a bit of a geometry geek, at least 
bike geometry. Maths can go and do one. But uh, that's really interested me, okay? So in order to fit those wider tyres in, you sometimes have to make sacrifices, but really say they've kept the chain stays as short as possible. So they're 425 mil, if you're interested. Uh, bottom bracket drop has increased to 76 mil, if you're interested. Um, they've also kept the stack height as low as possible, despite having to increase the clearance around the front tyre. So, uh, so it's, it's still in the kind of realms of normality, but the top tube is really long. So for my size, I'd be running a much shorter stem than usual. How is this for a bit of hot tech from the gravel world? Spotted this uh, from uh, a spectator, Bass, a spectator who has ridden the Transcontinental with this very setup. It's a homemade frame bag. Apparently it takes just 10 minutes to make and will last about 5,000 kilometers. Looks to me pretty aerodynamic, um, space for all of your bits and pieces. And look, there's even some Velcro to keep the, uh, keep the flap closed. <laughs> I'm blown away. Whose bike is this? No, not Richard Melee, but that is a clue. Sponsor of Team UAE Emirates. This is, of course, UAE Team Emirates rider Isaac Del Toro, representing Mexico here. Now, Colnago have sorted them out with this beautiful looking G4X, complete with custom NV decals on the wheels to match the decal on the down tube. Really interesting mix of components on here. So the bike is set up to be as close to Del Toro's road bike as possible. 38 centimeter bars, massive 130 mil stem on there. And he's got GRX group set on here in the main, but you can see that's a Durace crank set there. That's to get the bigger 5034 chain rings, also save a bit of weight. And similarly, it's got a Durace front derailleur on there as well. So a little bit lighter, a little bit lower profile, and also I think a little bit quicker than the GRX equivalent. Um, although it's got mountain bike pedals on here currently, Del Toro is gonna run road pedals, he thinks, having seen the course now. Um, but otherwise, he seems very laid back about this bike. I guess that's what being a ridiculously talented young rider gives you, just confidence. Nice. How cool is this? A custom painted bike for one of the outgoing world champions, Matej Mohoric. I say outgoing actually, by the time you watch this, he might have won again. He's certainly one of the favorites here in Leuven. Now this is very much a Road Pros gravel bike. We've got a full Durace group set on there, albeit one with 5034 chain rings as opposed to the usual Prospec 5440. Also, have a look at the size of that FSA stem, 140 millimetres long. The reason being, we're told that Mohoric has chosen a small gravel bike, even though he's 184 centimetres tall. So this is going to get as close to his road position as possible, mainly due to that lower stack height of the smaller frame set. Interesting though, he hasn't gone for one of FSA's super aero integrated cockpits, but still got mega narrow bars on there. Right, that is all the hot tech that we've got time for, unfortunately. Not only do I want to watch the rest of the women's race, I also have to get ready for my own race tomorrow. I don't know whether I told you, but uh, yeah, qualified for the World Gravel Champs. Uh, there'll be a video on GCN about that one coming up. But uh, yeah, get involved in the comments section. Let us know what you think about these setups. Has it surprised you that riders are running full slicks? Yeah, give the video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it as well. See you later.